Fortnite stole what? Things from other games are in Fortnite? Mr. President, code red. I repeat, code red. I don't see how they can because they're possibly allowed, although I can't imagine the court's allowing it. <laughs> okay, I'll admit it. It's for the better when Fortnite gets inspired from other games. And while we still love you, Fortnite, we want to look at things added to Fortnite that was taken from other games. We're going to title this Things Fortnite Stole Just for Extra Views. More ha ha ha. Super fast past that part. Let's jump to number 10, Vaults. With the most recent season of Fortnite, we were introduced to something quite interesting with the new locations, vaults. Right now, you can collect vault keys from the bosses at each POI and then get a ton of loot from these locked rooms. But guess which game first had vaults before Fortnite ever added them? One of its main competitors, Apex Legends. When Apex got a brand new second map back in October, it brought some secret vaults with it. In Apex, you have to find the flying cargo bots with red panels to have a chance at getting a vault key. Once you got a key, you could head to a vault and get the highest tier loot in the game. So yeah, a pretty similar concept. Other than that, they are still kind of different. Like in Fortnite, at least you could get the key card from defeating the boss rather than just having a chance of seeing one of those annoying drones, so yeah. Number nine, creator collaborations. We were all pretty excited when Epic announced the Fortnite Icon series starting with Ninja back in January this year, but Battle Royale games collaborating with its biggest streamers and YouTubers, it's not exactly something new. Back in 2018, the devs over at PUBG announced a new series of cosmetics called the Broadcaster Royale Pack, where you could support your favorite pro players and streamers who played the game. There were some pretty big names too, with skins of streamers like Dr. Disrespect, Shroud, Justin, Choco Taco. Then again, PUBG wasn't even close to Fortnite's icon series, as the PUBG collaborations were just things like weapon skins and clothing items with the creator's logo on them, so nothing even that great. Whereas now we have a ninja skin, actual emotes like the Pokemon and Jordan Fisher one, and then upcoming collabs too. So while games like PUBG have done this stuff before, Fortnite seems to already be doing it better. It's kind of a trend. Number 8, The Respawn Beacon. When Fortnite announced it would be adding the reboot van all the way back in April of 2019, everyone quickly jumped to make fun of Epic Games because, well, in the words of Twitter, Apex already did it. One of the main appeals for Apex Legends when it first came out was that you could pick up your teammates' respawn beacons and then bring them back to life. At the time, you couldn't do this in Fortnite, so when Epic eventually added the reboot vans into the game, we were all pretty excited, but also kind of joking around that they copied Apex. Let's be honest, they kind of did. But it's a good thing in the end, because reboot vans make the game infinitely better. Not only that, but Fortnite also got one of the best parts of Apex Legends and reimagined it through the ping system. In Apex, everyone loved how you could communicate with your teammates without even voice chatting to them. Pinging was one of the best features when it first came out, and of course Fortnite went and added their own a few months later. I'm not saying they copied Apex, but they copied Apex. Number seven, the landing beacon. You might not know this, but when Fortnite added landing beacons in Season 4, it was actually taken right from another Battle Royale game, one you might not have heard of yet. By landing beacons, I'm talking about the 3D map markers that appear when you ping someone on the island while skydiving. Turns out that Fortnite didn't exactly come up with this on their own. Another game, Realm Royale, had these beacons before, and when Epic added them into Fortnite, some fans kept saying that it was stolen from Realm. Then again, other players stopped to say that 3D markers are really useful no matter where Fortnite got it from, and that it doesn't matter if it was stolen. I mean, fair enough, they have a point. It's not a full-on feature, it's just a small, tiny little thing that makes our lives easier, so why not? If anything, copying what Realm Royale did is just a huge compliment to those devs. Number six, supply drops. Okay, this spot is pretty obvious, I know. Fortnite was clearly not the first game to think of supply drops, but we thought we'd mention it because there is a history of things like airdrops being added in other Battle Royale games before Fortnite. For example, PUBG has had airdrops for years, long before Fortnite's Battle Royale mode was even a thing. Not to mention the fact they randomly drop on the map and parachute down, it's a little similar. And again, if we're gonna say that, then we have to surely point out that PUBG and Fortnite both copied this from Call of Duty with the whole care package streak they've been doing since Modern Warfare 2. Oh, wait, it's there. If we go even further back, Call of Duty was the one who copied the dude who invented the helicopter. I'm smelling a lawsuit, people. Number five, creative mode. Where do we even begin with creative mode? When Fortnite announced its third game mode in 2018, we were all both pretty excited and skeptical. I mean, we've all heard of creative mode before in the one and only Minecraft. Being able to fly around, build whatever you like in your own little world is pretty close to what Minecraft's creative mode is. Although at least Fortnite have added their own spin on it. Nowadays, you could have featured islands, custom spawn lobbies, make your own game modes or short films, stuff like that. But then again, you could do all of that in Minecraft's creative mode. But at the same time, what can't you do in Minecraft's creative mode? It's hard 
not to copy that game. It's all fun and games though, because Fortnite's creative mode is actually really cool, and the stuff you could achieve with it is insane. Number four, Sea of Thieves. Okay, I know this one is a bit of a stretch, but Fortnite decided to go with the pirate theme for season eight just around the time that Sea of Thieves was at its most popular point. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. So we're not saying that Fortnite copied Sea of Thieves, but something is up, maybe. Basically, with Season 8, Fortnite added cannons you could shoot yourselves out of, which you could do in Sea of Thieves, on top of the Pirate Island theme, not to mention the treasure chest where you need a map to go and dig up a chest for loot. We're gonna say it's inspired by Sea of Thieves rather than stolen because, I mean, come on, it's pirate stuff. They didn't invent pirates, did they? I'm just being honest. Okay, we'll take this go. Yo, there's no way the f***ing cannon just bugged! <laughs> That's so unlucky. Oh my god. Either way, talking about this kind of makes me want to go play Sea of Thieves again. Number three, the storm. Believe it or not, one of the biggest features in the game, the storm, doesn't belong to Fortnite. Who would have guessed? Okay, I mean, obviously they took it from another Battle Royale game. The storm first appeared around the time that H1Z1 and Arma were popular. There were mods on games like Arma, which included a storm, and eventually the developer of DayZ, Player Unknown, went and made PUBG. H1Z1 and PUBG obviously kickstarted the entire Battle Royale movement and caused Epic to go ahead and make Fortnite Battle Royale, the game we all know and love today. So technically, without those two games, Fortnite would just be a yet another medium-sized game and either Minecraft or something else would still be on top. But storms like the one in Fortnite have their own history in games as a whole, not just the battle royale genre. So it's hard to exactly pinpoint where Fortnite took the storm from, but it was, <laughs> it was H1Z1. Number two, Overwatch. Overwatch is a game that a lot of people try to copy, and fair enough, it's a great game. But it seems like Fortnite have been stealing things from Overwatch for years, especially character designs. There are a few skins in Fortnite which are way, way too similar to some heroes from Overwatch, and you might think I'm just making some stuff up, so here's my show and tell. If you look at the Omega skin from Season 4's Battle Pass, does it look familiar to you? The body and mask is pretty similar to Genji, although this is kind of like the worst example of all. That comparison might be a stretch, but there are also some pretty obvious obvious knockoffs here. For example, the Arachne skin from the item shop is literally Widowmaker. There's not even an argument here. Look at that. It goes even further, with Raven looking like the Reaper and Hollowhead looking just like Reaper's Halloween skin. Don't forget the Snowfoot skin looking like the Baihu Genji. But there is one skin which is so indisputable, no amount of you commenting will change my mind. This thing is straight up mercy. You can't make this up. That is straight up copied, and I don't even think Epic will try to deny that. But moving to our honorable mention number one, we have one which probably isn't stolen, but it might be, so who knows. Back in February of last year, Overwatch added a new hero to its roster called Baptiste. Now this guy could heal his teammates by shooting health bombs at them. Sound familiar? Well, what if Fortnite based the bandage launcher on this? I included it as an honorable mention because it's kind of a stretch, but at this point, what hasn't Fortnite stolen? I wouldn't put it past him. There are some other versions of healing with a gun, like in Team Fortress 2 and stuff like that, so Fortnite could have taken this from really any game out there, hence our honorable mention. But we got two honorable mentions today, and for our second honorable mention, we have the Guided Missile Launcher. If you didn't know, it's possible that Fortnite stole the idea for the Guided Missile from quite an old game. We're talking about the old James Bond game 007 Nightfire, and check out this clip of it in use. Works pretty similarly to the Guided Missile, doesn't it? Oh my god! How interesting, Donald Mustard. At our number one, we have <gasps> the Battle Pass. <laughs> okay, the real shocker here is that Fortnite's main attraction, one of the things that set it aside from literally every other free-to-play games, isn't even theirs. We're talking about the Battle Pass, something everyone loved to praise Epic over for not adding loot boxes and keeping it optional and cosmetic only. Well, it wasn't their idea. While a lot, and I mean a lot of games, have stolen the Battle Pass concept from Fortnite, Epic themselves aren't the ones who created it. You probably didn't know that Dota 2 has had a Battle Pass since all the way back in 2016, with other versions going as far back as 2013. Just like Fortnite, Dota 2 uses money from the Battle Pass as a way to fund esports and the game itself, because both games are free to play. It's a shame that Dota doesn't get enough credit, as most people assume Fortnite were the first to do a Battle Pass, but in reality, it wasn't them. Am I complaining? Absolutely not though. Thank God loot boxes are going away. This is one thing I'm glad everyone stole. But click on screen right now, you need to watch this. This has been Tommy from Top 5 Gaming, I'll see you guys there.